Are you tired of creating random content, blog posts, podcasts, or products that are seemingly random and all over the place? Do you want to make a bigger impact on your clients, have a targeted message that will really connect with people? If that sounds like you, you are in the exact same place that I used to be until I found and discovered and started using the things that we're going to talk about in today's episode. Welcome to the Empowered Podcast, episode number 98. Thank you for tuning in today. I am your host, Ellery Wells, and it's been a couple weeks. Honestly, it's been a couple weeks since I had a podcast and since I released episode number 97. This is number 98, and if you like to follow things in order like I do, <laughs> you can always listen out of order, but I like to have a checkbox, a sequence of things that I know I'm just doing things in the right way. That's just uh, the personality that I have. I don't know if that applies to you or not, so that's why we number them. Anyway, uh, it's been a couple weeks since I released episode number 97, and I a couple months ago, actually, I set out to make changes to the show make do things differently so that I'm not just another podcast you know there's there's all these statistics about how podcasting is growing how there's just you know more and more but I don't want to be just another another podcast that you listen to by the way thank you for listening to the show I I appreciate it I would love to hear from you but I don't want to be just another podcast that you that you listen to or you start and you just you do, you don't pay attention to anymore. And I made a an effort or made a goal of mine to just not not that I was putting out crap before, but to really try to condense the information to help busy people become entrepreneurs. You have very little time. You have limited uh, margin in your life and we need to fill that margin with the best possible information and content so that you have an action plan you know exactly what you need to do to develop your exit strategy leave your job become an entrepreneur start a business and make it successful and that's what we want to do so just to give you a background on today's episode i've been working with developing an avatar segmenting email list and really figuring out who it was that i wanted to talk to who it was that i could connect to and be, by doing that, I have had a greater impact on the people who read my emails, read the blog, listen to the podcast, people like you, people who I meet in person who recognize me, which is always a crazy thing. Um, but I, because I have narrowed my focus, I've actually had a bigger impact. And there's a movie out there, and I can't remember what it was, where the guy was like, you know, he held out his hand and he, he said, if I slapped you, it would hurt, right? But if you bring all of those fingers together, it turns into a fist and a, and a fist hurts way more than a slap. So that's what we want to do with today's episode. I want to show you how to bring all of your resources together and give you the punch that you need instead of these seemingly random things or products, uh, how to be how to transition from this low paid generalist to a highly paid specialist. It's why your main doctor makes less than a neurosurgeon because one is general, one is highly targeted and specific. You know why the the bus driver, which anybody can do, makes less than something that's hard to do, like drive a NASCAR car or something like that. So we're going to show you how to do those things. I'm going to walk you through a list of questions that I go through every time I want to redefine or figure out more about my ideal client avatar and share a couple of personal experiences, share a few client experiences, and then uh, we will. I will offer you a resource that you can download um, actually, let me do that right now. If you go to empoweredpodcast.com slash avatar, uh, empoweredpodcast.com slash A-V-A-T-A-R, you can download, you can enter your email, and I will send you the download that I'm talking about right now. And you can go through it. We're not going to go through everything in the audio and plus, you're going to want to have the the download. There's extra information in there that will give you more clarity around your message. 
And I promise you, this you cannot be successful in whatever it is that you want to do. You cannot be successful if you're all over the place and random. You will only be successful if you are targeted and precise and specific and you're talking to a single person. And that's what I want for you. So go to empoweredpodcast.com slash avatar and download that resource and we'll get started. So for the last couple of days, I've been uh, I've spent the last uh, two two very long days at the machine event, the machine machine live put on by a digital marketer here in the Austin area, and I can't tell you enough just how much of an impact that had on me. Just figuring out stuff having to do with email marketing, uh, but that's not exactly what we're here to di- talk to or talk about today. However. They did talk about this, and I just had a whole bunch of conversations with with clients and coaching clients, master members, and things like that about this exact topic over the last couple weeks. So to hear these big guys and these big businesses talking about what I'm about to share with you gave me a sense of pride and kind of reaffirmed uh, what I've been doing. It's kind of exciting. So this is the Entrepreneur's Guide to Identifying Your Ideal Client. And this will apply to you whether you are in fitness, whether you are cooking vegan food, whether you are a chiropractor or a doctor or anything. This will apply to you, I promise. This is we're, what we're going to talk about is how do you can stop creating random content that's all over the place and how you can provide specialized resources for targeting your audience that you know you can help and you know who will get the most value of what you have to say. And we're going to talk about how you can target those clients, have a bigger impact on them, and get more clients and build a list of prospects, get more traffic, how to find your specific audience so you can create something that will really help them and specialized content. Like I said, you don't want to be creating blog posts and things that are just all over the place. We want you to find a specific audience so you can really help them instead of just trying to reach everyone. Okay, so if you haven't already, grab a pen grab a paper, and if you haven't already downloaded the PDF, go to empoweredpodcast.com slash avatar, and you can download and follow along. So these are the questions that will help you better understand who your avatar is. And if you haven't thought about these questions, it's it's past time. So let's let's get Let's get to work. Seriously. Okay. The more, and if you haven't, it's time to get to work because the more targeted you can be with your marketing and content creation, the better of a salesperson that you're going to be without feeling like a salesperson necessarily, but the, the better you will be able to reach the people who really need to hear your message. So the first question, are, is your ideal avatar a male or female? Is it a guy or a girl? That it sounds simple, but if you're trying to reach both, you know, maybe that's okay. However, if you talk directly to men, you will also attract more women and vice versa. If you target women, you will also target men. Think about Victoria's Secret, for example. Their products are for women, maybe the occasional weird guy who likes to wear women's underwear, but it is to women. But I I think I've seen that most of their customers are actually men. They don't make anything for men, but most of their customers are men. Do you see how that works? They have a specific and targeted audience and they're able to build a business around that because they know who buys their product. So are is your ideal client, is your avatar man or woman, male or female? And then how old are they? And having a range is okay as well. Um, my avatar, for example, is anyone from about age 25 to 55. You can go a little bit younger, you can go a little bit older, but generally 25 to 55 is my target audience. And we won't go into why just now, but if if you're in that range, along with an answer to all these other questions that we're about to go through, that is who I want to talk to. So next question, my ideal client, my ideal avatar thinks about fill in the blank. What do they think about when they when they are like right now, just imagine what are they thinking about? Is it, you know, if it's lunchtime, are they thinking about, uh, I'm ready to be through the end of the day. I'm ready to go home. Or are they thinking, man, I'm starving. I can't wait to go to lunch with my coworkers. Or I've got a fun lunch and learn coming up. I can't wait to get to that. What are they thinking about? Next, and, and these aren't necessarily in any particular order, but how did your client get to where they are? 
Did they go to school? Did they learn through hands-on apprenticeship? Did they just kind of pick things up as they go along? Is this something that they're passionate about and just figured out? Or did they get specific training about this? Because you would talk to a highly trained mechanic much differently than you would talk to to someone who is a hobbyist mechanic. If I go out there and I know nothing about cars, so forgive me. Uh, if I go out to the garage and I pop the hood and, and I would just stare at it, but if I'm gonna go out there and tinker, you would talk to me in a much different way than you would talk to someone who is a certified mechanic or whatever the certification is. Do you see how that, how by defining these questions, answering these questions and defining your avatar, you begin to not only clarify, but you also figure out who you don't want to talk to. If you're selling highly technical information about cars, you wouldn't want to talk to me because it, I wouldn't buy it and it would be a waste of your time because I wouldn't understand it anyway. And if you're talking about fitness, if you're talking to a certified trainer in fitness, personal trainer, you would talk to them differently than the guy or girl who just wants to go for a walk and you know lose some weight or something like that. By, by going through these questions, you begin to segment and divide and really just get a laser focus on who you want to talk to. And when you do that, you're going to get better results. So the next question, my client fears, what What do your avatar, or what does your avatar fear? Do they fear losing their job? Do they feel getting promoted to the point where they are incompetent? Or do they fear uh, death because they are sick? Uh, do they fear divorce? At this conference this past weekend, I talked to or heard from people whose market was marriage counseling. And the person who fears divorce is going to be someone who fears getting married in the first place. And if you're talking about marriage, you either counsel people who are thinking about divorce or you counsel people who are about to get married. And your audience there will be significantly different as well. My ideal client is worried about, and what are they worried about? What This kind of goes about what they fear, but maybe the worries are not quite fears. Uh, they're worried about making payroll for their business. So they're worried about getting a blog post published every week or a podcast episode or, or the quality of their content. So answering those questions, what types of goals do your avatars have? Do they want to have a multi-million dollar business or would they rather work their business from wherever they want? Maybe a, a beach or a jungle or something like that. Who are their competitors? How did they learn their skills or their trade? Did they read a lot of books? Did they go to school? Do they have a degree in, the top, in a certain topic? What type of work do they do? Are they hands-on? Do they work in an office? Do they work in a lab? You know, for some reason, I've, I've heard a lot about optometrists lately. And how you would work with an optometrist is going to be different than how I would work with Corey, the chiropractor. Maybe not entirely different, but if you can, again, get a specific, the key word here is specific. If you can be specific about who you're talking to, you're going to get better results. But once you, it's like a bell curve. Imagine the reverse you, imagine the bell curve, right? So if your ideal is at the very peak of that bell curve, there could be I'm not going to get technical, but to use the statistics term, there can be standard deviations away from that peak, from away from that ideal. So, for example, my ideal, uh, if we took 25 to 55, the average of that is, what, 40? So you can be a little bit older. You could be a little bit younger. But that ideal is, is, is that peak. And all of these factors go into this ideal avatar, that, that peak that we're talking about. And you might be... You might not be a male, but you could be female. I guess that's mostly the only other choice. Ten years ago, you could say that would be the only other choice, but these days, who knows? But you've got this, you've got, <laughs> sorry, I'm cracking myself up. You've got this ideal, and you, you talk about it being a male. That female is one, would be a, a deviation slightly away from that. So even though that's not the, the exact target, uh, you can you can be slightly to either side of it and still function. What types of things does your avatar spend their money on, uh, whether it's at home or whether it's in their in their business? Do they like video games or books or movies or playing in the yard? Or do they like going to the gym? And then in the business, really split this into two questions. 
Are they conservative with their business? Do they only fund things that they already have money in the bank for? Are they liberal with their spending or very conservative with their spending? For me, I only buy things that I have money in the bank for. So if you're wanting to talk to me about a big $10,000 renovation or something, uh, I'm not gonna not, I'm not gonna be your target audience, and you would be wasting your time on this. If you're if you want to target people who have debt and want to get out of debt, you might want to talk to my friend Amy, who is all about being smart with your money. But if you don't want, I don't know if Amy talks about credit cards, but if you don't want credit cards and she talks about credit cards, she would not be your ideal person to work with. And the same thing for her. If she's all about not using credit cards and you want to use credit cards, she's not trying to talk to you. So what do people spend money on? How do they think about money? And if they don't have any money, they might not be able to hire you. So keep that in mind as well. And honestly, that's one of the things that I, that's what, this is one of the questions that I really struggled with because I wanted to help start up entrepreneurs, help people kind of do a grassroots effort, do the bootstraps, you know, pull their way up that way. But I also realized that the people that have the money to pay me generally also have corporate jobs they have they're already making pretty good money because if they weren't they wouldn't be able to pay me if i'm only targeting people who want to bootstrap it and i'm targeting people with a low cost they're not going to be the ones that going to that can afford me to where i can do the things that i want to do and it's not just about affording me it's about me taking in revenue so that i can turn around and add more value to more people so figuring out how your ideal avatar will think about money is going to be a big thing. What types of tools do they use? What's their favorite social network? Where do they go online? If you're targeting women, you're going to want to go to Pinterest because 60 to 70% of their audience is women. You might not want to go to one of these other places because women might not be there. I don't know the answer to the question because I don't know who your avatar is. But think about that and go where your audience is. Don't try to pull your audience to where you are or where you want them to be. Fun questions. What kind of car does your avatar drive? You know, if you can answer this question in a lot of different ways. If they drive a Mercedes, uh, you can you can imagine something about them. If they drive a Toyota, or if you, they drive, you know, you can you can start getting a mental picture of who your avatar is. You could also answer this question like my friend James, who does the cash car convert, and he would he would drive or he would answer this question with they drive a cash car because he's all about buying cash cars so you can answer that question in a, in a very fun way what kind of clothes does your avatar wear you know you would target and you would have a message that would be different for people who shop at armani versus the people who shop at kohl's or the people who shop at goodwill do you see how these questions begin to shape who your audience is if you think your avatar shops at goodwill they're either i see all these billboards where they're talking about getting a uh, uh, get your halloween costume at at goodwill um, I've bought clothes at Goodwill because they were brand new. I mean, it doesn't matter why, but I've bought clothes at Goodwill. Um, I've also bought clothes at Dillard's and some of these other nice places. But by knowing where they go and where they spend money, combine that with what kind of car they drive and how they think about money. And all of a sudden, if you've got a person who is frugal, drives a, a cash car that's less than $10,000, and they also buy most of their clothes off of the clearance rack, you're probably not going to sell them a $10,000 item or a $2,000 item. You might. I mean, in The Millionaire Next Door, I'm sure he talks about how most millionaires drive a car that's 20 years old. So you might, but you won't know that until you go through this process and answer these these questions. So that's what, we're, again, that's what we're trying to do. No, not one of these questions, or not even a handful of these questions will give you the clarity that you need to create a targeted, specific, and specialized message. However, if you go through this exercise and you start looking at all of these questions, you're going to have a really clear idea of, of who your avatar is. Where do they work? Do they commute? What are their hobbies? You know, just just a few other questions. If they love fantasy football, I know that's hot right now. I couldn't care less. <laughs> I could not care any less about fantasy football. But you know one more thing about your audience. Now, we won't go into too much depth here, on, but these are kind of some bonus questions. You, you cannot answer these questions 
until you have answered the other ones. So if you go to empoweredpodcast.com slash avatar and you download this resource, this is this is the third or fourth page. So after you go through that first page, you can move on to these kind of bonus questions. These are where the rubber will meet the road. They're the more fun questions, I'll be honest. These questions are way more fun than what kind of shoes do they have, what kind of car do they drive, those things that seem too detailed and, and to the point of almost being irrelevant. I promise you they aren't, so please answer all of those questions. But you cannot answer the ne these next questions that we're about to go through until you have fully and effectively answered the questions uh, on, on page two of the slash avatar resource. So what are these questions? Who buys from your ideal clients? Who buys from your avatar? And that that will help you. If you help your avatar help their customers, holy crap, they're going to love you forever. If I can go in and talk to James about how he can convince more people to get out of debt and, and save cash cars, James is going to be a friend for life. My friend Justin, who runs the carflip.com, he buys and sells cash cars. He'll buy one at a low cost, sell it at a high cost, and he's making great money doing that. If I can help him sell more cars and help more people, he's going to keep coming back to me for more information. If Victoria's Secret can make the man look like a hero because he picked out the perfect pair of underwear or bra or whatever it is for his wife, he's going to keep coming back to Victoria's Secret. Do you see how this works? This is a detailed question and it's again more fun than some of the ones that we've just talked about, but this is where the rubber meets the road. If you can provide your avatar with the tools that they need to serve their avatar, they will keep coming back to you for those tools whether that tool is a cash car guide whether that's the guide to picking out the perfect women's lingerie or whether that's the perfect fitness product that you can use to get your clients more of an impact whatever that is they will keep coming back to you next question what are your ideal clients need and this is your opinion on what they need or your expert opinion on what they need what does your avatar need Answer that question. Next question, what do your ideal clients, what does your avatar think that they need? Now that's a big di differentiator. Uh, whenever I ask these questions, what I thought they needed and what they, what I assumed and what I asked them, what they think they needed, the answer was quite different. So let me pull up this. I, I In doing this exercise with one of my clients, I pulled up my notebook um, I've, I've numbered the pages. So this was page, I'm on page 53. I had to go all the way back to page five. I had to go back uh, five months. But here's an example of how I answered that question. What do these people need? My clients, what do my avatars need? And what problems do they have? I said, they need solutions. They already have high self-esteem, but can use the occasional encouragement. What they need, what they are looking for and will pay for is a template or a task list. They want a roadmap. They want to be led down a path and told what to do and when to do it. They don't necessarily need to know all of the options or ways to do it, but they do need to know the best way or the one way. Does that sound like you? I wrote that five months ago, almost six months ago. And whenever I was sharing this with my client, he said, wow, that's, that's exactly uh, that's exactly right. That's how I feel. That's how I think my my peers in our in our private group feel. And then I answered this question: What do these people? What do my clients think they need? They think they need more time. They think they'll wake up one day with an open calendar waiting for them to fill it with their goal-oriented activities. They think they will just need to find the one thing that will change it for them. And they think that they will get a lucky break that will make them an overnight success. Now, I know you probably don't believe in overnight successes, and you shouldn't. But do you agree with that? Does that sound like you? If it does, you're in good company. I thought that way about myself for a long time. And my active current clients deep down sort of think that. They think they're going to wake up one day. Next week, I'll have more time. Next month, I'll have more time. Well, when 2016 rolls around, I've decided I'm going to make a resolution and I'm going to, I'm going to put all of my things on my plate and get everybody else's things off of my plate. 
well, we know that doesn't work. Does that sound like you? If it does, maybe a mastermind would help. Maybe coaching would help because those are the exact same things that my current clients are thinking and working through. And I can help you too. I would love to. And if you can answer those questions in a way that fits your ideal avatar, you'll know how to serve them. What they need and what they think they need might not be this exact same thing. And if you can bridge that gap and give them what they actually need and still acknowledge and talk about what they think they need, they'll love you forever. So second to last question, what kind of problems are your ideal clients, are your avatars facing? Lastly, what products or types of products are your clients currently buying? If they're buying cash cars, you're probably not going to sell them, sell them a brand new Lexus. Let's just be honest. Unless they're millionaires and they can walk in with, I would love to one. I did this with my engagement ring. I walked in with a wad of cash and fanned it out like I thought I was thought I was cool. Maybe I was, um, but I realized I wasn't getting airline miles. <laughs> I was like, well, that's kind of a dumb a dumb thing to do because I didn't get the miles for the engagement ring. But I would love to walk into a car dealership and open a briefcase full of cash. I don't know if it would work. I don't know if they. <laughs> would buy it or not but i just think that would be kind of cool because most of the time when i walk into a car dealership they don't talk to me i don't know if they don't want to sell a car to a guy wearing shorts and a polo shirt or if i look too young or i don't know maybe i just look like a jerk i don't know but car de- car salesmen hate talking to me they just they avoid me like the plague so i don't know i don't know what that is what that's about but by answering the questions we talked about the shorter more punchy the more detailed questions and then these bonus questions these longer ones where the rubber meets the road by by doing that you can really get inside the mind of your avatar you can understand them and not only understand them but understand why they do the things they do and there's a lot of psychology there and you don't have to be my degree is in psychology so I love it you don't have to have a degree in psychology and you don't have to think like this however if you do you will be more successful and if you don't if you don't think about who your avatar is who you can provide the best information to who will get the most value out of what you have to say sell or create you're going to waste your time. I promise you that. If you feel like you're not getting any traction, go through these questions and instead of answering them with one or two bullet points, put 10 bullet points. Instead of one sentence, write 10 sentences about your avatar. Know who they are and know what kind of problems they're facing. Not only today, but the problems that they're going to face six months from now. Start solving those problems for you, for them now they're going to see you as an authority they're going to see you as a valuable resource and they're going to keep coming back to you whether that's a blog a podcast or it's your storefront they're going to keep coming back to you because you are solving the problems that they have now you are a resource for the problems they've had in the past and they will come to you in the future when they have problems because they know that or they will assume or hope that you have an answer and then if you've thought that far ahead and you know who they are and you've started creating those solutions you can give them the solution that you've already created and you're going to be like the oracle you know if you're a matrix fan who can see into the future or something like that they call someone uh, called Warren Buffett the oracle of Omaha and I like that so I used or oracle there but they will they will think that you can see the future and that's not necessarily true nobody can but you know them so well you already know what kind of problems that they need and you know what kind of solutions they're going to need and that's that's a, that will be a powerful thing for you that will be a powerful that will be a powerful driver for your revenue your business your bottom line it will help you connect with more readers more listeners and it, it, it's going to have a significantly positive impact on your business because by knowing who your avatar is, by knowing who they are, what they're already buying, and what they think they need, you can really help them succeed.
So one last time, go to empoweredpodcast.com slash avatar. You can download the template of what we're talking about. You can print that, fill it out, and have that hanging anytime you write a blog post, anytime you go to create a product, anytime you go to record a podcast, review that, and you will have you'll know exactly who you're talking about. You'll know who you're talking to, writing to, creating products for every single time you put pen to paper or flip on the microphone or you go out to your workshop to start creating something new. You'll know exactly who it's for. You'll know exactly how they're going to use it and how you will be adding value to their life. And honestly, once you know those things, the marketing piece, the sales piece, they they kind of fall into place. They make things a lot easier a lot easier because you already have the solution. You already know what it's going to do and you know who is going to get the most value out of it. And then you can stop wasting your time because you're not trying to sell to everybody. You're trying to sell to a single person or a single type of person. And then the statistical term standard deviations away from that. And you can, you can be more effective with your time. I think that will help you. I think that will move you forward in your blog, your podcast, your business, um, whether you're a chiropractor or an optometrist. If you do these things, I can promise you, you will get better results, waste less time, and have a greater impact. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Empowered Podcast, where my goal is to help you develop an exit strategy so that you can leave the job that you hate, transition to a job that you love, get started making an impact with your words, your wisdom. I'm your host, Ellery Wells. We'll see you in the next episode. And remember, go to empoweredpodcast.com slash avatar to download all of the questions, the templates, and the workbook that we talked about in this episode.